What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Brunch with Desby, your favorite number one podcast on Apple Charts. What a fucking honor. I always love coming in, you know, first place. And so to see myself on the top of the charts, I just can't. So if you're new to this, um, you probably have no clue what I'm talking about and you're probably stunned. So feel free to Google it and find out that it's not true. I am not going to lie. I'm in a weird space today. I did not want to come down and do this. Even though like once I step into this room, I actually do have a lot of excitement. Like it really just brings a good vibe and I'm like, okay, like I can do this, you know, whatever. But I've just had like a weird couple days. I've ever since I've gotten my period back postpartum, I'm like a literal bitch on my period. Like there is no in between of, you know, oh, just a moody, just a moody moment. Sorry. Like, no, I'm a raging bitch. I have zero patience. Like, don't even look at me. You know, like I, I feel you touching me with your eyes and it literally just fucking pisses me off. I don't know how to explain it. And I know that there's new things out called like, you know, PMDD, which is typically like pre-menstrual, you know, but still like, I just feel like I'm just like a bitch. And I don't know if it's just a hormonal shift. Like, I don't know. And I don't want to like make excuses for myself. Like I'm on my period, you know, like that's so 12 years old, but man, I just don't feel like myself on my period and it's frustrating as hell. So just, you know, let's just get that out there. Because if you're going to listen to a podcast today, I think that the host, you know, oftentimes should be honest. Where are they at? How's their headspace? Because at the end of the day, energy doesn't lie and it translates, but we're still going to have a fun episode. I just want to put that out there because you know what? Let's just come one, come all. If you woke up this morning pissed off too, like I'm your girl. Welcome to the show. You know, and if you're not pissed off, um, good for you. (laughs) Good for you. Happy and healthy, not me. Literally. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia Rodrigo. Um, but we are going to be having a fun episode. So let's just like clear the air. You know, I even feel better that's off my chest. I am recording early this week, which I think also just pissed me off initially too, because I already hate that I have to record on Tuesdays. Like in a perfect world, I would re- I'd be recording on a Friday and going live on a Sunday. Like I absolutely hate how early I have to record because like sometimes I just feel behind by the time I'm listening to my episode. I'm like, damn, like I wish I could have talked about this, you know? And at the end of the day, like things are always happening. Like new things happen, like pop culture, you know, big events, something, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me being insecure. So if, if you still like hearing what I have to say in my little stories that I tell you, let me know, because I'm going to be honest. I need your affirmation today. I need your affirmation of like, Des, I, I just love your stories. I don't care if they're a year old please. (laughs) I'm begging you. So it's a busy ass month for me. Actually, today, as you're listening to this, just to put in perspective, it's Monday of last week and I have to leave for LA in about three hours. So I'm recording this. We have, you know, 45 minutes to, let's be honest, probably an hour together. And then I have to jet off literally, but I'm going out to LA with Alani Nutrition. I'm super excited. Once I land, I'm actually landing in Columbus, Ohio. We have a weekend out at the lake with um, Wyatt's side of the family, which don't get me wrong. It'll be really fun. It's not like work or anything. It's just being away from the house that long. Like, I don't know about you guys. I, number one, hate packing. Number two, hate unpacking. And number three, I hate traveling for longer than like five days. Like there's, if I, if I'm in the right mindset, like, Hey, we're going to Hawaii for nine days. Oh fuck. Yeah. Like take me, take me away. You know? But if you're like, Hey, we're going to LA, I'm like, woo. And then, and then Ohio, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> you know, like it, I hate being out of my like home for that long, especially on my period. You know, you're telling me I got to be on my rag this whole week. I got to bring out all my tampons. I got, you know, I'm hoping I'm going to be off it by the weekend to be on the boat, but like, damn, which great question. Would you rather be on your period at the beginning of a trip or would you rather start your period at the end of a trip? Or what if you're on it the whole time? Let me know. So I'm doing that. And then next weekend, so I come home next weekend, we're going to Houston for Ty's 16th birthday, which I can't believe my little brother is going to be 16. So we're going to do that for him. We're going to go to Alpha Land. We're going to do the whole thing. We're going to go to Corrupted Strength. Like it's going to be really fun for him. He absolutely loves Russ Swole, and I was so sad when I reached out to him. Um, he was like, oh, I wish I could meet up. I'm going to be in Miami. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I felt like I broke my brother's heart, to be honest. So hopefully we're going to be able to meet up with Christian Heidi. 
um, Heidi wanted to do a podcast. So hopefully we'll be able to make time for that. She is literally the busiest fucking person I've probably ever known. And like, quite honestly, I watch her stories often and I'm like, do you sleep? Like, I'm so fucking serious. Like, do you guys feel the same way? Like Heidi, like no wonder she branded buff bunny. She is the fucking energizer bunny that happens to have some muscles. Like she doesn't fucking stop. Neither does Christian. I'm like, do you guys ever just sit down besides on your vacations? Like, you know, you go on vacation, you, you can't, I don't even know. Sometimes they're working on vacation. Like they bring their laptops. I'm like, <laughs> like you guys are crazy, but no wonder they built what they built. So we're going to Houston. Then we come back. And then in between this, you know, I just have like my normal weekly stuff, right? Just like busy. We're, we're starting up our challenge in August. So I got to finalize all that shit. And then the last weekend of July, it's going to be very exciting. However, I'm going to New York with Tula, which will be so fantastic. They are such great hosts and like, it's already the hotel that they have for us. It's amazing. Um, we're actually being styled by Abercrombie and Fitch. Like it's going to be really fun. Like, let's be honest. Tula's got budget. Yeah, they got budget. So we're going to be not balling on a budget and we're going to go to the Renaissance tour. We have a private, um, suite that we get to experience the concert in. So excited. I'll, I will be, I'm going to 100% put my hand up here. Any Beyonce hardcore fans, you can 100% hate me. This wasn't my choice to go. I'm not a hardcore Beyonce fan. I'm not going to sit here and say she sucks. I'm not going to sit here and say she's not a performer. I just don't know like her, like we all know the OG Beyonce. We all know the Destiny's Child Beyonce. I couldn't sit here and sing to you her current music from like 2000, I would even say 2019 and up, you know, like when she released Renaissance and stuff. I can't sing it word for word. Okay, like I know the vibes, I know the bop. So I'm kind of there for a good time. And again, I didn't ask to go. Okay, I would have asked to go to the Ares tour again, (laughs) period. (laughs) That's what we're doing all month. Isn't that a busy month? That's crazy. I'm sorry that I just spent the last like six minutes talking about myself, but also like it's my podcast, you know? (laughs) Let's go ahead and take a drink together. We haven't done this in a while. And honestly, I woke up this morning and parched. You know, I'm ready to go. Honestly, Archie was up at 4 a.m. Dude, this little fucker... Didn't go to sleep till six crying in our bed. Like I usually never bring him down to bed. And this morning when he woke up at four, which also I always wake up at four. I don't know why four o'clock on the dot four to four ten. like every day I wake up and then I go back to sleep, but still like, isn't that weird? So anyways, he woke up and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to cuddle with him. I never have done this. I never do it. He was always up in his crib. They're only little ones. I wanted to cuddle with him. No, 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 no. I quickly realized why I never do because he stayed awake. We had to put on Hey Baby Sensory, like nighttime lullabies. We were doing everything, new bottle, new diaper. Like I felt like I was in a newborn stage again. I, let me tell you, I quickly was like, yeah, I'm not ready for another one. Another one. No, no, thank you. So anyways, let's go ahead and grab a drink. I'm parched. Let's go. I got my Alani. I have my normal greens in here. Um, I packed my little scooper for my peached iced tea. So when I opened it up, I was like, fuck, I don't have a scooper. So I just used my old greens, like the normal flavor. One packet of crystal light lemonade with my creatine in it. Honestly, forgot how fucking good this is. Takes me back to Florida because I drink this combination every single morning in Florida. Okay, let's go. Come on. <laughs> I didn't do it as good this time. That is so good. Honestly, just hold on. Mm. There we go. (laughs) Oh, I hope you guys got a few chugs. I think I chugged like 10 or 11 gulps. So you guys should be pretty hydrated right now. And we'll do that again before we break into a segment. (laughs) All right, let's get right into some stories of this week. First off, like, I feel like I really just need to address every single celebrity, actor, singer, songwriter, whoever is getting hit in the fucking head. I feel like it's my due diligence now here to just simply let you know, like, new segment, who got hit in the head this week? 
Harry Styles was hit by an object at his Vienna concert. Hit again. Remind you, he has already been hit. Hit again. I'm not trying to be like a bitch, but like I am. If you are throwing shit at people and specifically people you are seeing in concert, number one, are you mentally ill? Because why are you there if you don't like them? Number two, you 100% deserve a fine. I'm not saying you need to go to jail. I'm not, you know, whatever, but you deserve to be fined if you are hitting people in the head with objects. Like that is for toddlers playing at restaurants, accidentally throwing their toys in the air and hitting someone's on the he- someone on the head. Not a grown ass fucking adult at a concert that they paid to be at hitting someone on the head. That is the most disrespectful thing ever. Like I feel like we so easily, and I said this before when, was it pink? Um, her, the ashes got thrown on stage to her. They are still us, you know, like, and as much as we're like so removed from them, like 100%, we literally all live different realities. It doesn't mean you don't just disrespect someone. And even if it's supposed to be like, oh, I didn't mean to hit him. Like, don't throw shit on stage. Like, this is why we have to have clear fucking stadium bags. This is why we can't bring in certain things before you know it. We're not going to be able to bring our phones into places. Like it's because people like this fucking ruin it. And to be quite honest, that is so embarrassing for the artist However, the only positive note I can see coming out of this as an artist is like, hmm, like at least I'll make the news. We'll go from there. Next up, we have Speak Now came out last week. And I'm just going to keep talking about it because I'm going to transparently tell you guys a few, probably like last year, early or mid last year, I made a TikTok and I was like, listen, I understand Taylor Swift is like an amazing artist. And listen, I'm owning this. I know she's an amazing artist. I love a lot of her songs. I think she's a great performer, et cetera. But why are people like, why do people treat her like God? You know, like, like the Swifties, the hardcore demonic Swifties, I called them out. I'm like, like, I'm genuinely curious. Like, why are we like a a cult? I got a lot of replies of people that were like, I love you, but this is a hot take. And I had other people that were like, totally agree. Complete fandom over anyone, no matter who it is. It's like crazy. So the Swifties, a lot of Swifties are like mid Swifties. Okay. And then you have like, like the hardcore Swifties. And then you have like the demonic exorcist Swifties. I'm not there. Okay. But I will confidently tell you, I, I moved up in both of my Eras tour experiences. I've moved up in my rankings of Swift, Swifter. I am a Swifter. I love watching reels of just Taylor Swift humor. Um, I love watching concert footage now. Like, I mean, I think it's like once you experience anything, whether it's Billie Eilish or Harry Styles or whoever it is in concert, right? Like for me, Lil Wayne. Holy fuck. I always loved my Lil Toonchi, but when I saw that motherfucker in concert multiple times, killing it, loved him even more. You know, like I'm a Lil Wayne stan for sure. My point is when you see an experience like your parasocial relationship in real life, you level up a little bit, right? So I will confidently tell you, like, I'm 100%, 100% additional Swifter. So I became, I kind of leveled up there. And um, with that being said, Speak Now has been on repeat. I've been extremely emotional over it. Um, And there's a sense of maturity that has come from this album that a lot of people are outraged of. So that's kind of like our first big story. Or people, a a lot of people have a little bit of, panic, rage, upset for the lyric change in Speak Now. The old lyric was, she's not a saint and she's not what you think. She's an actress. Whoa. She's better known for the things that she does on the mattress. Whoa. Okay. So now it's, she's not a saint and she's not what you think. She's an actress. Whoa. He was a moth to the flame. She was holding the matches. Whoa. Okay. So the point is there's this, you know, Taylor loves women. Taylor loves, she's a very proud feminist, et cetera. So by saying she's better known for the things that she does on the mattress is, you know, obviously a little bit misogynistic in its origin. But here we are in 2010 when the song was originally um, released as were a lot of fucked up songs back in the day, right? That we still sing proudly and we'll fucking belch from the bottom of our lungs, top of our lungs. I think a lot of people 
no matter what would still like sing that lyric and not think it was a problem to re-release it. A lot of people are saying that it was like slut shaming, shaming sex workers, etc. When I think also though, like she is in this, you know, 2010, she's 18 to 20 years old, hurt by a woman who stole her man and, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe you're a little bit of a slut at this point in time, right? 2010, we're pissed off. She stole my man, et cetera, whatever. I just, I don't think that there's like a big, it's just, how do I say it? It's like, it's just, I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree. Like, I think it's mature for her to release this updated version. I think I, the reason that she released it, I do also think is pure in intention. Like, I think she genuinely has just aged. She sees what she's saying. She wants to, quote, correct it. She wants to re-release this with pride. And I'm totally down with that because I do think it aligns with her. But put this into anyone else's hands. I think that it would have been very performative. And I think when it comes to needing to, like, change certain lyrics, like, do you guys remember with that big um, Lizzo scandal last year? She put the word spaz. Like, she was like, maybe I'm spazzing out. I don't remember. I'm spazzing out. And then, like, she was being called out for, like, ableism and making fun of people's handicaps, which, of course, she never meant to do. Um, And I think there's always growth and, you know, whatever. I totally get it. It's just, like, when can we just also enjoy something and not have to, like, dig so fucking deep to like decipher every single thing and make it like a big deal. So again, I'm okay with it because I mean, sure it aligns with the Taylor now versus then. And it feels very genuine, but I just hate how everyone has to like course correct every single thing ever because they're just terrified of like getting canceled, you know? And it's just, it's like exhausting, you know, like, can we just like, let's just enjoy a song. Or if it's, if you have a problem with the lyric, I can also probably confirm it's not your type of music anyway. Like you probably would never listen to Taylor Swift anyway. So like, why does it matter? Like, I don't know. Again, the maturity, like good for you. Um, And again, it aligns, but it was just somewhere I was like, I don't think we need to have mass hysteria. So this is where I'm bringing it back to the demonic Swifties because the girl that this song was written about, she fucking knows it. Let me tell you that. She, I guess, reached out to Taylor, Taylor's team, and requested that she had changed it. So then this girl, I don't know her name, she is now getting hate mail, like, on her Instagram photos and everything. Um, And I saw this under, like, I was under a reel, and I was, like, browsing the comments of what people thought, and they, someone had, like, shared this, that, that she was getting hate under her, like, Instagram comments now and stuff from Swifties. And that's where I think it's, like, embarrassing, like, you don't need to go to her and make it a big deal. Like that is embarrassing for Taylor's fan base. You know what I mean? Like, don't give us that name, you know, like you guys are crazy. Sorry. Like relax, relax. It is also just one song lyric. And guess what? At the end of the day, if you want to fucking sing your heart out and still say, she's better known for the things that she does in the mattress. She's a slut. Like that's up to you. You can also still sing that (laughs) like, okay, she's not, she's a slut isn't, you guys know what I'm saying. She then went on to go have like all of these great songs, right? Re-released, re-recorded voice pitch was a little bit different. She sounds very mature. Um, and again, a lot of people were like pissed off. I'm like, do, do you expect her to sound like she's 18? Like she is 32. Like this is 13 years ago that she released this album. She's 33, whatever. 13 years ago, this is 13 years of maturity and not just her life, but her vocals, her vocal cords. Like there's so much anatomy change that goes into aging and hormones and more like we can't expect her to just, do you want her to auto tune it? Like, you know, get the fuck over it. I thought, honestly, I was shocked when people were like speaking down about speak now. Cause I was like, dude, no, this is like amazing. I loved the maturity. I felt like I was singing with my current self. You know, like I didn't feel like I was 18 again. Like it was feeling closer to home because I could hear this artist I grew up with sound like me, you know, like aged and it's beautiful. So anyways, those are just my two cents. She then went on to um, Kansas City last weekend for her era's tour. Literally this mother, this mother, like literally mother, she sang Last Kiss. And then she also added a whole like extra set list to speak now with a new outfit change. 
She then brought out Joey King, Taylor Lautner. She world premiered her music video, I Can See You. Kansas City, forever, go fuck yourself. You know, that that was like where I was at this weekend. My client went to um, night two and she got her secret song as Last Kiss. And her and I were talking about it during my concert. I was like, dude, if I get Last Kiss, I'm going to die. She ended up getting it. So I'm happy she got it at least. But like at all, everyone else there, like pop off. Okay. So anyways, you guys all have to let me know what you think of Speak It Now. Again, I know I'm like late to the party now because it's like released, but technically it was just the other day. But like technically you're listening to this later, like whatever, just give me your feedback. Okay. Next story, Jamie Foxx spotted on the Chicago river three months post mystery sickness. All right. You guys probably remember, um, a few months ago, he was, he was in like the ER. People were even saying he was like paralyzed, couldn't see. Like there was like rumors speculating everywhere. People were like, oh, it's from the vaccine. Oh, it's from this. Oh, like it was just, it was kind of nuts. And he never spoke out about it. But the other day he's on the Chicago river, tipping his hat, giving a nice little wave, seems to be up moving well and whatever it may be, you know, bless him. I'm glad he's doing well. I just feel like we deserve that update because, you know, he was in our stories a few times. And honestly, he's such a well-known actor that, you know, that would have been a big hit to the industry to to hear that something tragic happened to him. Um, But I'm glad to say that he's doing well. One of my favorite stories, Margot Robbie walking the red, or should I say pink carpet for the Barbie movie uh, launching, or should I say, I always say launch because it closed, releasing July 21st. She was wearing all black. So when I saw her in this black upside down umbrella, I was like, what the fuck is she wearing? Your Barbie bitch. Like, I don't know about you. Margot Robbie seems like a pink girl through and through. So when I saw her in all black, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold your fucking horses, girl. Hold your fucking horses, girl. Where's your, first off, where's your, where's the volume in your hair? Okay. I think she had like a slick back pony. So it worked, but I was like, what's going on? And where's, where's your pink, where's your pink outfit? Go change. But then I saw that she dressed up as the iconic um, Spotlight Barbie, which I thought was a really cool thing. Cause obviously this is the premiere. This is like, if Spotlight Barbie was a real Barbie, that's what she would be wearing on a red carpet, you know? And so it was beautiful. It was well done, perfectly orchestrated, looked very much like the doll. She looked great. I'm a little bit nervous for this movie. I'm just, I really hope it doesn't let me down. The only thing keeping me in the game of like hope is number one, Ryan Gosling's in it. Number two, Margot Robbie's in it. Like you don't typically see these two actors actress, actor, taking on shitty roles, you know? And I think it'll be a fun twist of like modern day meets child's play. Like, I think it'll be for us, you know, millennials, I would even maybe argue Gen Z um, and people older than us to like really enjoy. And I hope that they keep it funny. Like, I don't know why I'm thinking of it this way. I'm like, I kind of want like a, like a meet the Fockers energy. I don't know why that popped in my head, but just comical, hilarious, relatable, yet takes us back to childhood. That's kind of like what I'm picturing. And like I said, last week, I'm kind of picturing the, is it called enchanted? I didn't even end up looking it up. Um, where she like kind of falls out of like being Cinderella or something and lands in New York. She comes up through the sewers, you know, and like runs the streets kind of like buddy, the elf that's what I kind of been picturing like elf. So like Barbie escapes into real life. She's like, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, and like that, I don't know. I used to play Barbie games all the time on my computer, PlayStation. Um, I was always played Barbie. It was like a saddle club and it was like a gray, a white or a dapple gray horse or something like that. And then you would like go trail riding and go jumping. Did anyone play that? You could like go walk the horses on the beach. You could like give them baths. I don't know. My sister was a huge horse girl, so mm, red flag. (laughs) So that's my last story for you guys. Um, Quick, fun, efficient, but I have an even bigger story because again, I'm fucking pissed that I am recording this like late because by the time you guys see this, it's a good, it's a good thing, but it's releasing tomorrow. And I've been hyping this up because it deserves to be hyped up guys. My heart is literally pitter pattering because this is so literally crazy to me. And you guys can see it right over here. We have 
an energy drink, but not just like an energy drink, guys. I have to catch my breath. This is Alani X, Kim motherfucking Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. I'm now let, let me just let me just flex real quick. <laughs> if you guys remember last year, I debuted my collaboration <laughs> with Alani, Don't Be Beach pre workout, cherry coconut pre workout. And now Addison Ray has had a collaboration and so has Kim Kardashian. And so I just kind of want to like, I just kind of want to put it in perspective that I was able to collaborate with a company that has also now had a collaboration with Kim K and Addison Ray. Kind of iconic. <laughs> Anyways, we have the brand new Kim Aid. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit shocked with the flavor choice because I was like, oh my God, what if she does like the orange soda or like the strawberry soda, which I know it kind of plays off of a meme, but like, come on. So funny. I was also kind of picturing a, I don't know what flavor I was picturing, but I pictured the can to kind of emulate a nineties energy. So I was picturing like a dark, dark Navy or like a dark black can with like almost like jewels over it, kind of giving like a Dolce Cabana, um, nineties look from her fashion design. That's kind of what I was thinking first. I was like, Ooh, maybe she'll do something like that. Then I was like, okay, or she'll do like a nude can and make it like very skims. Um, but this alone, this can, it really does remind me of skims quite a bit. Actually, it reminds me of the bubble gum color from skims, but also like the Alani logo on it is very like, it's just very plain. It's exactly what you would picture. It kind of reminds me of the skims pop-up. I believe they had for Valentine's day in New York. Um, it reminds me of the same thing, like just very like pink, fun, still super simple and elegant, not too like, it, it, it would make me kind of raise an eyebrow in a, like a grocery store if I saw it, but it would also kind of look clean, you know, um, Kim's branding with the other Alani branding definitely isn't it. You know, the Alani's other branding is like too overwhelming for Kim. It's like, she wanted to keep it simple. You can tell. The flavor Kimade is strawberry lemonade. And I have to say they nailed it. Um, it's a very fun flavor. Like it would, if I were to compare it to anything, it would be kind of more like a kiwi guava in the sense of how it goes down. Like it's not tart. It's not like a cherry slush. It's not like a blue slush. It's not like a juicy peach. It's like a, oh my God, it's just, it's perfect. Like it kind of tastes like a, like a, an ice drink that would, that would honestly, that's actually spot on. You know, like this, is it strawberry lemonade or at least strawberry or some type of berry from the ice drinks? I C E E. Is it two E's? That's what it tastes like. Same carbonation, everything like very like bubbly, but perfect. So this is releasing tomorrow on the website at 12 PM EST. As always, you can use code Desby or always you can shop www.alaninu.com backslash Desby. That'll support me. I don't know how they landed this. Like it was my first, when I heard this collaboration, like it was my first shock of like, wow, they're huge. They're huge. Like I got my first Alani shipment ever when they launched. Like I was on the influencer list to send their first ever releases to so to see where they've come from and see where they are now, even signing as an athlete, it, it is quite literally amazing. Like I couldn't imagine how Katie and Hayden feel. I couldn't imagine how their team feels. I mean, there's a whole team behind this, you know, and they all work so fucking hard and diligent and it's literally amazing. So I'm, I'm so excited, like so cool. Um, insane. That's all I can say. Speechless. So exciting. I don't know how they're going to fucking top this. I'm going to be honest. Like they better have some cool shit in the works <laughs> or else like what? Um, so anyways, with Alani that, that tomorrow, I'm actually going to Sir on Wednesday, Sir restaurant and lounge. And from what I hear, they're actually filming right now. So like also just random while I'm thinking about it, please send me some manifestation energy by this time that like, I will have a story that I got to like meet someone, please, please. 
I also told Lonnie, I'm like, um, you need to get like, you need to get Lisa Vanderpump on your PR list. You know what I mean? <laughs> I need, I need a pump teeny flavored energy drink. Hello. Sounds fun. All right. Next up, we just have a few launches to cover. Paragon launched last week. I'm, I'm wearing the light bra right now with the Reluna pocket black leggings in black. You can go pick up whatever they have left. Not sure what they're going to have left, but make sure you're still saving your money for later this year. Next up, Petula launches on the 20th. I kind of hyped up this launch last week, and I told you guys a few weeks ago too, Petula and Paragon just popping off, pop, 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 popping off. Absolutely love it. This new launch is so fun. New dresses, a midi dress, a sports dress. We have like spandex or whatever you want to call them, shorts. We have leggings, T-shirts, crop tees, like the colors, lavender, Lucky Charm, Fruit Punch, um, just like, or well, Punch. It's all so good. And I'm just, I'm really proud of them. Again, another company that's just kind of, you know, grown from the bottom as they all do. Very proud of them. As always, does be to save money on both. Um, Vu Ray, my collaboration, my partnership with them is officially live. So if you have never ordered Vu Ray before, there are new releases coming. So just kind of hang your horses if you haven't yet, because with my code, you do get 25% off your first order. So make sure you're using that wisely. Next segment, we're going to jump right into, um, watches. Okay. I have two for you. First, let's start with the one that like literally ruined my whole life. Taking care of Maya on Netflix. Absolutely slaughtered me inside and out. I mean, if, if you ever seen a photo of like a fish being gutted, cause that's what I felt like for sure. It was so tragic. Um, and Number one, if you haven't watched it, watch it with, I don't know. I don't want to ruin it for you, but like maybe look up what it's about first if you're comfortable. I don't know. It was like really heavy and I just want to make sure y'all are in the right place to watch something like that. So next up, spoiler warnings. So if you haven't watched it or you don't plan on it, you can listen to me. Or if you have watched it, you can listen. Three, two, one. Okay. So uh, it was not even what I thought it was going to be like. I thought it was gonna, when I started watching it, they probably set it up this way, right? I thought that the mother was like quite literally purposely abusing her child, giving her too much drugs. Like I really thought that's what it was turning into. Like I thought it was going to be um, kind of like a gypsy rose, right? If you guys have watched any of that documentary called the act on Hulu or mommy dead and dearest, it's a, it's the documentary kind of reminded me of the same thing. Like I thought it was going to be like when the mom controlled the daughter and like gave her too much medicine and actually was making her sick. That's what I thought it was going to be. No, 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 no. It turned out to be much worse. When they brought on the, the day that they took the parents away from the daughter. So Maya's in the ER or whatever. Um, parents are in there. Dad's in there. And then one day they're just like, you need to leave. Then they come back to tell him she's now in state custody. Like, just like that. You have two parents who are taking their child to the doctor because they're worried about her, and they're taken away from her. So medical abuse, medical negligence of the parents, whatever it may be, such a hard thing to do. And I think it, it, it mo- in most cases, is taken very seriously. But you obviously, at the end of the day, you do have caretakers or like meaning nurses, doctors that, that get it wrong, you know, assume wrong. They're just like me or you, right? They're in these power positions, but they're just like me or you. So you have this doctor who thought that the child was being treated wrong. They also had no understanding of her illness. Um, they thought that it was just, you know, I don't want to say made up, but they're like, yeah, there's no way like they're, they're over, they're giving her too much ketamine, like whatever it may be. And, um, they just did a lot of fucked up shit, a lot of shit wrong. And it just kind of, I'm going to be honest, it scared the shit out of me because I was like, what if I take Maddox in one day and I'm like, oh, he's, you know, not feeling well. 
Um, I'm so worried about him. And then before I know it, they're like, oh, you've been poisoning him or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like it, it freaked me out to be honest. Um, because you know, kids are kids, kids, they fall downstairs. They, they fall running. They fall walking. Like there's so many things that you can like just hurt yourself as a person. All of a sudden you have a mini person and it can all come back on you. You know, oh, you pushed them. Oh, you, you're hitting them. Oh, you're, you know, whatever. And, you know, my sister, Michaela, has shared this story very openly. Um, when Mila was like a couple months old, she had these things kind of like along her back and um, right above her butt called Mongolian spots. They're very common in kids, but specifically kids that are um, darker in color, olive skin, black skin, whatever it may be. Even my brother had them. So Michaela took Mila to the doctor for a checkup and she was like, Hey, you know, Mila has these, she directly showed the doctor. Mila has these, I just, you know, want to document it. What, what could it be? First time mom, Michaela's 23 years old. So she, um, she takes a picture of them or, you know, maybe whatever needs to happen. Michaela goes home all of a sudden it was either later that day or the next day, knock, knock, knock at my sister's door child protection services is at her fucking door um, asking to look and ransack their whole house looking for any signs of child abuse because the practitioner aka the doctor had reported her and um, luckily it turned into nothing and it was taken care of very efficiently there was interviews they both had to be interviewed separately Michaela and Joey Um, they're newly married living in my grandma's house, new child, like, you know what I mean? They're brand new parents, scared the shit out of them. 100% traumatic. My sister is terrified of doctors now, terrified of taking Mila to the doctor, terrified of taking Gio to the doctor, like all of these things. And it's 100% warranted. And I think it was just such a um, kind of close to home show to watch just because like that could have been Mila. Like, you know, it could have been taken too far. It could have not been looked into correctly. It could have been not trusted, you know, whatever it may be. And, and so, um, it's just, it happens to so many people and it, you think it doesn't happen. It won't happen to you or someone, you know, and then it does. And so I just, my heart was with them and the way that the mother took her life. It was just, Oh my God, it was so heavy. Um, so if if you haven't watched it, you should, (laughs) but no, it's just, it was a great reminder. Um, just it, it, for me, it was a reminder to document everything. Whenever you don't know, whenever there's a rash, whenever there's, you know, whatever. Our iPhones, they, they can show the time, the date now. You know, there's so much stuff. Document it all. If you're ever talking to a medical professional on the phone regarding something serious, audio record it. Um, like, that's what this mother did. And I think, if anything, it was also really smart for us to be able to watch that type of thing and watch how a mother took care of it um, and ended up you know, doing it correctly. It's just they didn't give her the time of day to talk. So they're still battling that court case, trying to be seen. And I think their court case was scheduled for this September, hopefully to go to trial and get some justice in some way. Because honestly, at the end of the day, like uh, they deserve all the fucking money in the world with the pain and suffering um, that they have been put through, as well as especially Maya, who was you know, so little at the time and now is a teenager and doesn't have a mom, has a dad who is mentally exhausted like their whole family's just exhausted it, it takes such a toll on you um not just losing a loved one but you know Maya like never getting to see her mom again after that one random day they took her away from her and never granted her permission to see her again and it's it's very very sad um it was it was literally heart-wrenching so great documentary it was a story that needed to be told I hope it gets so much press I hope that those judges feel like absolute fucking tar yeah It was rough. So on a lighter note, I did watch the new Kardashians. Honestly, I'm the more that I'm, the more that I'm kind of listening to Courtney, and this is the only thing I'm going to say about it because the rest of it's kind of like filler. The big deal here in this whole season overarching is the feud between Kim and Courtney about Kim doing the Dolce Gabbana show and Courtney just getting married there, just using Dolce Gabbana, blah, 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 blah. The more I'm listening to these two bicker, they, it's just ridiculous. I'm like, you guys are so stupid, like with all due respect. And you guys know I love the Kardashians. Like for God's sake, we're literally having a Kardashian themed workout month. 
for my app, which by the way, had no clue about this Kim K collaboration until today is Monday. I found out Friday. So like this had nothing to do with our week, with how much I've talked about Kim, how much, you know, like nothing crazy. Right. So anyways, they're bickering about this. I think Courtney is being overdramatic. I think if anything, Kim is being very level headed and I can see her side. Kim and Courtney have always had a very complex relationship. And like, we've seen that since the beginning of the show, like ever since the O G G G G keeping up with the Kardashians, like Courtney and Kim have just never really gotten along. Like they're so extreme opposites. And I feel like, you know, Kim has always kind of just been like a mule for everyone else. So now she, she is doing what she wants and that does involve doing a ton of shit. Like she wants to be successful. I think she has the push to do it. Courtney, on the other hand, has always just been a little bit more reserved, go with the flow. And like, that's totally fine, but, um, they're just two different people. And at the end of the day, I just feel like that's getting lost. And I don't think either of them are like completely disrespecting the other. I think it's just them being overdramatic about it. Um, and instead of kissing and making up, they're going to keep making it a big deal. So I don't know how it's going to end up going. I think at the end of the day, their relationship is just kind of, it's very surface level anyway. And I think they just need to kind of keep it that way. Like let's meet up when we have like maybe a family vacation, whatever, but I don't think they're just going to go hang out. Um, like maybe Chloe and Kim would, but it is sad because they're sisters, but they're, they're in very different stages of their lives. Kim is newly divorced. She has older children. Um, Courtney is now a stepmom, newly married, very much in love, very much honeymoon stage and is pregnant. So like, there's just a, two different sides of them right now that they're just, they're not clashing very well. Um, and I think I, I, you know, f- was it a couple episodes ago? I don't remember, but court Kim was talking about her mom and how her mom just went through everything she could to learn how to become a manager and learn how to do all of these things to help at the time, Bruce Jenner, now known as Caitlin, and um, how Kim was so motivated by that, that she had all these kids to take care of every morning, but like she still showed up to try to like learn how to do this for us. And because of that, that's where they are today. And so she really honors her mom in that way. And I feel like Chris isn't the best at like, keeping neutral sides with her kids. I don't know. They're all grown. They're grown and they're adults at the end of the day. So it's kind of hard to say next up Vanderpump. Um, this is like literally just infiltrating my brain right now because I'm at the end or I'm at the beginning of season four. Uh, am I, I don't know. Sheena just got married. So like the episode I literally just ended on was Sheena just tied the knot. They were about to go to the reception. Like that's literally where we ended. I cannot explain to you, and I will say this probably every episode as long as I'm recapping this, I can't explain to you how much I fucking hate Kristen, and as of right now, I hate Stassi. Like, they are both so toxic, I quite physically can't handle it. When they come up on the TV, I literally get pissed off, and TV shouldn't have that effect on me. You know, like, that's a deep personal hate, and um, so... Tom Schwartz ended up hooking up with this girl in Vegas, which can we just like confirm when we say, oh, we hooked up, that means penis to vagina, vagina, penis, 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 vagina, vagina, whatever it may be. We had sex. There was sex involved, sex, right? When we say, oh, we hooked up, it's like, oh, so you guys had sex? No, no, no. We just made out. Okay. So you didn't hook up. Let's just clear the air there. Okay. We're all adults. When we say, oh, we hooked up, it's we had sex. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page because I hate it. It's a pet peeve of mine when people are like, oh yeah, we hooked up. And you're like, oh, so like you had sex? And they're like, no, we just kissed. We made out a little bit. Like, what the fuck? Then you didn't hook up. You you made out. You sucked his dick. You know, like, come on. You know, it's not hooking up. So, anyways. Tom Schwartz hooked up and by hooked up, obviously I mean had sex, but he lied about it to Katie said they just made out. So Jax is kind of like this villain. He's out to ruin everyone's life. I don't know what trauma Jax went through. And like, I haven't dug, I haven't done anything to like know any of the characters other than in this current moment, because I really want to be engulfed in like seeing what happens day by day, month by month, year by year, whatever. 
So I don't know what happened to Jax as like a child, as a teen, as a young adult, but he seems so broken. Like he has a literal problem. And I really hope in the upcoming seasons, we either see him number one exit or number two, get help. Like he 100% ha- has a sex addiction, which is not healthy. You can love sex, but y- to be addicted to anything, not healthy. Um, He is so manipulative. He has so much dirt on everyone that he uses as he uses it as ammunition and not as like trust. Like he's not a loyal person. Like he will snitch on anyone. Um, he's not one to hold a secret, which there's just certain things that like, especially I feel like in between, like with guys and girls, of course, but like, if you have a secret of someone's your first line of fire shouldn't be using a secret. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's so rude and disrespectful. No matter the level of friendship that is there is not there anymore. I feel like a a secret is a secret for a reason. Like, it's such a trustworthy thing to put into someone else's hands. Um, And so for for Jax to just, like, use these secrets out of nowhere is so fucking rude. I, like, can't stand that. Um, And then Kristen is orchestrated this whole thing with Anne Marie, which was, like, the hooker from Vegas or whatever that tried to hook up with Tom Sandoval. They did. They didn't. They probably did. Everyone just cheats on everyone. And I'm like, is that like LA? Like, is that, you know, oh, it's so LA. It's like, I, then I don't ever want to live there. You know, like everyone just seems so, and I think that is the hustle culture of LA. Everyone will just climb on top of everyone. And it's like, if you go from LA to the Midwest, you're like, howdy neighbor, you need some sugar. You know, like it's just so different out there, which is funny. Cause I'm like literally going out there this week, but everything out in California and in West Hollywood, LA, San Diego, like wherever you are so gorgeous, but you truly just breed a different kind of person out there. It's a very different culture. Um, everything. So it's, it's been a tough watch, but Kristen just got fired. Thank God. I hope Lisa doesn't let her back in. Like I really hope she doesn't. I kind of have a feeling that they're going to have like a talk again and she's going to be like, I'll give you one more chance. And then Kristen will be like, okay, I can't stand her, dude. Cannot stand her. Um, I'm really liking Katie. I can't stand Kristen. She's that weird fucking weasel bitch who comes in like maybe once every other episode, once an episode randomly has lunch or dinner with someone just like spills tea and then like leaves. I don't like her. Don't like her. She's like just this little Stasi minion mes- messenger, and I just I can't deal with her. Um, who else am I hating right now? Sheena was a bridezilla. Her and Cher are married now. Ariana was extremely is it Ariana or Ariana? I feel like they say it differently. Two people say it. Differently. Anyway, she was a little bit uncomfortable with Kristen coming into the bridal suite as she should, and then so now we're gonna get into the wedding reception, which will be. I'm a little terrified because you get all of them with all their issues right now and they're all drinking. I'm, I'm uh, got a little bit of anxiety for them. So we'll see how it goes. But Vanderpump rule is definitely a favorite right now. Um, fan fave and probably, probably a show. I wish I would have watched sooner. Like I really do wish I would have watched it from the beginning. Like, because I would be curious to keep up with the social media. Like, in the now, like in 2015, like I wish I knew what they were saying right now, you know, like, damn, I wish I could see like a, from the archives of like posts, you know? So other than that, those are my two watches for the week. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really trying to binge through this VPR, um, on my flight. I really wanted to start tell me lies, tell me lies. I think my sister told me I have to watch that. Um, and then she told me I have to watch the summer. I turned pretty. I'm like, I already did. I already did turn pretty this summer. <laughs> so other than that, honestly, that's all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to chat, wanted to get through it. wanted to, um, give you a little bit more emphasis on, you know, some feedback and from the stories and shit like that. Um, but you know, some days it's just a reminder that some days we have to do the shit we don't want to do. And most of the time when we end up doing that shit, it ends up being good. You know, like today I didn't want to record. Now I'm here and I'm like, that was a fun episode. Love just chatting with you guys. Um, it's nice not to always have like a segment if you, you know what I mean? Like, um, 
I want to just sometimes review stuff and then talk about current events and then like chat about other stuff. You know, what do you guys think? Hope you had a great day. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great Sunday. Make sure you pick up your Kim K, Kim Aid tomorrow, 12 p.m. EST, code Desby or alaninew.com backslash Desby. And we will see you guys next week. See you next Sunday. <laughs>